you know, one thing I'm always impressed with when I build a Lego set is the Technic construction. Now, sometimes it's a little much that it's almost like the internal structure. They're trying to build some creative Technic structure and then they throw some other stuff on top. But I really appreciate all the strength that they build in these sets too. Um, you know, any kind of new set you get is very sturdy, it's structural, it's, it's meant to be a toy as opposed to a fragile Lego model. Um, sometimes it's overkill in my book, um, but this thing, I mean, this, you can really flop the tie striker around and it doesn't move, even considering these wings pivot here. So I think this is a great design and I want that sturdiness to go in mine and already, you know, you can see this thing's flopping apart and falling apart. So I'm also challenging myself to use more Technic parts and to see if I can make this thing more rigid. Um, one idea I have is these L bricks. Um, gonna maybe put these across here and run some beams down the back. Let's see how that goes. And one thing is I'm thinking here that I don't really have a handle on is how deep the middle section is. Maybe this is actually supposed to be deeper. So I'm gonna look at some pictures. So here, it's one of my reference pictures. Um, I think I can make it deeper. Maybe, maybe I'm gonna make it six studs deep instead of four. That middle section's got a lot of greebles on, so that's gonna be fun to do. But a big part of my process here is two steps forward and a step back, because you know you get something built like this middle section and then you gotta start taking it apart again. Um, so if I go two more studs back, I'm gonna lose a row of these guys. And the way this all connects in here, I mean it's a very strong connection when you have two rows of studs and you connect sideways into it. I mean that's one of the techniques uh, Lego uses. But it's, it's a very rigid, tough connection. It's kind of hard to take apart. And I'm always making sure I have the light bluish gray pieces on the outside, just in case there's any, um, you know, you can see any of it when you put the piece on the end. Now already having the deeper connection here is gonna help with my strength, even though I'm using this goofy four by seven, you know, with two by fours and two by threes kind of offsetting. So that strength will help the flex this way. But I think if I can make these work, um, that'll, that'll, be a, that'll be a good thing. I think that'll work. I have a whole bin here full of most of my Technic parts. I need probably three of these to keep them all really organized. Just pulling out a pile of these pins here. And the other technique Lego uses a lot is using these Technic um, bricks. You know, you connect them all sideways this way, but then you put a plate on them. I mean, they use this all the time. And once you do that, that's a super, super strong connection. It works with all the flex and going in different directions. Um, so I'm gonna try to use that. I wish I could connect into this section here with some Technic. That would really, that would really help. But because these are all the connectors for the round slopes, um, I can't do that. See, already that helps quite a bit. And I haven't really secured that connection. Once I get some plates or more um, connections going on there and uh, on, on here, on this section and down here, then it'll be really rigid. And I may even um, put some more Technic and connect it into here. You know, so the, the middle section here is even sturdier and it's all connected. But that'll help. I think um, 
Next, I need to get kind of a sense of scale for the whole thing. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to fix these sections here because yeah, it doesn't work in the back. I got to take one row of the round slopes off here, which is all right. I have an odd number here, so I can take the, the one by out here. And then maybe I'll just have a tile back here or something. I don't know yet, but I'm going to do that. And then I think I'm going to build up my other wing so I can start to get a sense of how this is going to look. I may also, well, let's start with that. I'm thinking about how I'm going to fill in these gaps here. Maybe like a six by tile. There we go. So I'm using a one by four plate and then two by one round slopes. Now what's different about this is they are one stud flatter. The, the two by three is actually one whole, um, one whole brick tall where this is only going to be two plates tall and that gets me the room I need to squeeze these guys in here without disrupting the look too much. Huh? That'll work, I like that. I have a lot more of these round slopes. I think um, some parts of the roof, the top of the cylinders, they're gonna get built with that. But there's also flat sections with details going on. I'll work through that uh, later. For now, I'm gonna put this guy here. And I'm just gonna build up the second set here. All right, now it's gonna start to get a sense of scale, a sense of proportion to the whole project. It's one of those moments where it gets a little exciting. This thing is bigger than I thought it would be. It's, it's gonna have some weight to it. So one thing I'm gonna need to do, I think, is figure out a way to do some supports under here. And I think the design lends itself to that so that these things actually support the weight of the whole thing. All right, for the next section I'm gonna work on, I think I'm gonna fill in the back here. I have a, I have a clear idea what the back sections of these should look like. And I don't think I'm really gonna get it correct. With Lego you know it's kind of um, it would almost be like the inside of a dish you know where it's concave and then you got these little domes with the engines on the inside I have an idea how I'm gonna do it and get it kind of close we'll see how that turns out um, but I'm gonna start filling this I'm gonna take the wings off and um, and then maybe get to the middle section here strengthen this up build this top section and then it'll be hopefully mostly details. I gotta work on strengthening the connections here on the side and um, lots of greebles. You know, I definitely don't want this thing to be falling apart all the time once I get it built. So once I get more of these pieces on here, I'm gonna keep thinking I want it strong as I go along. But the wing sections actually are kinda heavy. That's a lot of plates. Um, so it's kind of a concern. In fact, I may change these connections here just to give me more plates and more strength on the wings. So, something to keep in mind. Another thing that I've been uh, looking at last night, I'm thinking about this thing quite a bit when I'm not building it, 
but uh, Tacitron reviews and Minecraft reviews, um, him and I had a little discussion and he pointed out that this ship showed up in uh, season two of Rebels episode. And it was pretty cool to see because they showed quite a bit of the inside, um, larger than I would have expected on the inside, but they had they had a good eight people inside of the TIE bomber. You know, Hera was flying and they had some people back here and then they had people on this side and then there was a doorway that went between them. Um, that doorway um, is kind of, you know, I don't know if that really jives with this plan. Um, I don't know if that's something that they had in mind back in 1980 when they made Return or, uh, Empire Strikes Back. I don't think I'm going to put that doorway in, but I'm not even sure I'm going to put any people or any kind of compartment on this side, but I'm kind of going to keep it in mind for this side. I know my Technic stuff going here kind of limits how much space I have here, but it was cool. I got to go back and look at that episode again and uh, see some great shots. I think they did a really good job with the model kind of matching you know, the other pictures I've been looking at. So it was uh, some good reference material. And I think my idea for the back, I'm literally just going to do that. I'm going to do uh, the eight by round tile and then a dish on the inside. That'll give me the look. It's not exactly how it would, would actually be, you know, but I can't create this round edge and then have this thing recessed in here. At least for now, maybe I'll come up with an idea down the road. And so when I do a section like this, I'm just going to start kind of putting some pieces in here to get this in the right spot. And then I'll go back and kind of refine this to make it stronger. Because really, I don't have a good idea how I want to connect that yet. So when I get stuck on a section and I kind of leave it here and then go off to work on a different section, you know, that kind of frees up that part of my brain and you know, maybe in 10 minutes I'll have a better idea. I love it when I know exactly where my parts are. Doesn't always happen. Again, going for strength here, just putting in some cross bracing, but also giving me something to attach up here. I do kind of think economically with my parts, you know, I've got a ton of these two by one bricks in dark bluish gray. I ordered a ton for my moon base project. And, uh, you know, so when you're doing a section like that, could I use three of those or could I find a, a two by three? Sure, I could use a two by three, but I have less of those. Um, so I try to use what I have more of. And even this section, you know, I just put a two one by 10 plates on either side of here. Um, you're not going to see both of them. I think this top one, you might see a little bit of the edge. So I'm thinking, do I have those in a different color? Could I use a combination of different parts that, you know, could I use orange or yellow, something that I don't use very often. Even dark bluish gray. I've got a ton of dark bluish gray plates. I've got this whole drawer here. I need to organize it someday. Not today. So there, that's another moment where it's kind of like starting to take shape. You can see that's how I intend to do most of the roof here. The other side has um, kind of a, I'm kind of envisioning like a plate here. And then maybe I make that up with some smaller slopes here because they've got a bunch of detail. I think this side is more on the round side. But next, I want to figure this thing out. You know, I want to connect those studs on the inside, but a bracket doesn't work. And I don't want a piece that's going to stick out. So my idea is to use the headlight pieces and use the back. I'm not sure it's all going to line up. Yeah, I can't use two of them stacked on top of each other, but maybe I can do two side by side and that'll be enough of a connection. No, I don't like that because I can't, I can't build any studs on top of that. So these are the older bracket pieces. But they have that, you know, that end sticks out a whole stud, but I think I can recess it and then put a couple of plates on that, connect it like that. That's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna try to do. 
back to the idea of build something up and take it apart again. See, even then, it's not going to be flush. See, there's a gap there. Uh, it's not good enough for it. Maybe, uh, it might be my last resort, but I'm going to try to figure out a different way. Okay, here we go. Two by two round brick with the axle hole. That's what I want to do. And if I need to, I'm going to put an axle to another piece inside of here, and that'll slide on and that'll get in there as where I need it to be. But then I just talked about the dark bluish gray, and then on the bottom here, you're going to actually see that little section here, so I'm going to put a light bluish gray here. Two by two round brick, axle, one of the bricks with the axle connection in it. So now I just gotta get it at the right height. That'll work. Now I'm just gonna build up a few more bricks and support this so this doesn't cave in. I'll do the same on the other side. I like that solution. I'll put some, put a little engine in here. I don't know if just, that's enough. It's not perfect, but it gets the idea across. That's kind of the important part here. Okay, so for now I'm just doing um, just two round slopes here. I think it's time to look at some more pictures. You see here, you can kind of see the recessed sections on the inside. Maybe I need to do the two, the two engines there. I'm gonna come back to that. But this section is kind of round and then we've got some round on the side but this big flat section. These are two by two round slopes, and if I use any of these, which maybe this works anyway, they don't have, they're not as tall as the two by threes, so it puts them at a different level, but then I could attach the plate on top. Now the catch is, I'm short on light bluish gray ones, which I find surprising, but then I start to wonder what can I, uh, where can I take those from? And maybe I even do a row of dark bluish gray here in the middle, just for a little detail. I might go with that. All right, that might be as far as I go for now. I think I'm gonna switch to the front here, and work on building up the front of the cockpit. And then for this, I can kind of come back to my TIE Interceptor, my TIE Fighter design kind of look at that to finish out these front sections. And I gotta tackle the metal here. Yeah, see I've got two by two round slopes in here. I had them in the wrong bucket. Even two by fours. I think at one point this was my miscellaneous uh, round slope pile and then I have since split these up. Now before this project, the round slope wasn't something I used a lot of, so when I was taking apart ships, this is, uh, they just all ended up in one bucket. All right, good, I don't have to worry about that. Don't have to rush off to BrickLink. This kinda has some weight to it. It's gonna be a heavy ship. And for the front of this side, I think I just decided I'm gonna do the six by round dish. There's a lot of details that go on this thing that I don't have an idea of yet how to do. So I thought I would use, you know, the TIE Fighter hatch here. 
you know, like the rest of them. I don't know that that jives with the picture, but I'm not sure I have a better solution. Oh, and I did have an idea. Instead of these pieces, I might do a try to do a section of the one by three round slopes kind of on the sides and then have this section flush against that. Yeah, the problem with that, I'm sure it's really exciting just watching me stare at this. You know, this slope works really well for the eight stud dish. I really can't get away from the cockpit and I want to have it symmetrical because I do think that that works. You know, and if I did that on the front here, the six by dish is too small. So I think I'm gonna stick with what I was gonna do. For this section here, I'm just putting uh, lots of these bricks with the studs on the side just because I know I'm gonna need to put a lot of greebles there. And then the other challenge will be the sensor that sticks down here. I haven't figured that one out yet. And because I did this goofy width, it's an odd number. So I'm using a two by one and then a one by one and I'm offsetting them. You know, cause this isn't giving me any strength here. <clears throat> you know, as far as the cross bracing But I'll need I'll need that for greebles. Maybe I'll leave that open going across there. I'm going to build this section across here. You know, it's the same design that Lego used on Vader's Tie Advance and stuff, and also the Tie Striker. I'm a little tempted to use Sand Blue like they did on the Tie Striker, but I, I'm going to save Sand Blue. I'm going to use it very sparingly on this thing. You know, just little bits of greebles maybe. You know, if you look at the ship in Rebels, I mean, it's clearly just light gray. Um, it's definitely got the bluish tint in Empire Strikes Back, and I wanted to kind of nod to that. But if I overdo it, it won't look good. Just always testing it for strength. And as I start to build this section up, you know, where can I make it stronger? This definitely helps. And I think once I get some plates going across the top here, um, it'll be good. But still, anything I can do to give it some cross strength, you know, using like these two by one or two by two bricks, L bricks. It's hard to keep track of all the different names for bricks. While I'm in here, I'm using some of these uh, printed tiles to create some controls on the inside of the pilot's seat. So now I'm trying to figure out how to attach this thing to the front. Not quite the same problem as the back. I'm gonna see if I can use a bracket for it. But again, I'm not sure if it'll be flush or not. Nope. All right, so the bracket doesn't work. I think I just have to use the two by one brick with the studs on the side. And then uh, I can only connect it with one, you know, one row of the two by two plate that's inside of there. The important part is getting it to the right level as the other side. There it is. What do you think? It's looking like a TIE bomber? I think it's getting there. So I want to reinforce all of this. At least, you know, so it doesn't cave in. Because I used a row of plates here to connect the section going across, I'm, everything in the middle is off by one plate. That, and then I also had the section in the back where I had to offset everything by one plate, you know, to get kind of the two rows of the bricks with studs on the side to line up. 
So that's kind of caused me some issues, but I think for here, I'm gonna take these off and do a couple of row of plates to get everything level again. And maybe even, maybe even I don't wanna do that. I don't know. One of the dilemmas with the TIE Bomber design, I mean, the more I've looked at it, you know, it doesn't exactly look exactly like a TIE Fighter in the suction. It's, it's two long cylinders, and you can just kind of tell when they built that in at Industrial Light and Magic, 1979, 1978, whatever, when they were getting ready to film Empire Strikes Back, you can tell that it was a different mindset. You know, they had the idea of the wings on the side, but it wasn't a ball in the middle. So they use these cylinders and that really does give it a different look. It's a different style. So that's kind of why, you know, the hatch, it really doesn't, doesn't work. And I've also got a problem that the back section is too tall. But this is the process. This is the fun part. So maybe if I lower that, see the thing I don't like about that is it gives us ridge in there. Okay, I haven't been able to work on this for a few days, but when I'm working on a project like this one, I keep it up in the kitchen and while I'm thinking, I'm thinking about it while I'm cooking dinner and stuff, you know, I pick it up and look at it. So it's always kind of in my brain. I'm getting kind of wrapped up with this one. But I noticed uh, one major thing. I had my wings too far, um, too far forward here. This side is wrong. And uh, I did a quick hack to move it forward a stud. So I gotta make that change. I gotta kind of clean it up. And so I spent a lot of time looking at um, some pictures of it too. There's no black on the inside of the middle panel here, so I gotta take out the black here. Hopefully I have enough of these gray pieces. Um, so that's that's one change I gotta make. And then the next challenge is these round sections and how I'm gonna meld this in here. Um, I think I have an idea. I think I'm actually gonna carry the two by three round slopes into here. We'll see how that goes. I toyed with the idea of making this middle section here like a, its own Technic module and it has pins in these two sides kind of snap in together. Uh, that's going to be in the back of my mind. We'll see. I don't know if I'm going to do that. But you know, I, it's early in the morning and when I'm kind of starting off, I'm still waking up. It's a good thing to have like these easy little projects that I can kind of get started with before I really have to do some heavy, lift, heavy lifting in there. Another section that I've been working on is the front. Um, I, I have an idea, I'm gonna look at that in a minute too. I toyed with the idea of doing something like this. You know, there's these little details that go around here and then there's also this opening in the middle. If I could have gotten eight of these around here, I think I might have done something similar, but um, that's gonna be one of those details that maybe makes or breaks the mock, but I have an idea too, I'll get to that. The important part of this was that these connection points line up with these strips of gray and also on the other side with these sections and it connects right there. I was off. You know, it was one of those things where I was looking at it, picking it up and it's like something just doesn't look right. And uh, luckily that wasn't a major, major change. I was worried I was going to have to change these connections here where they fit in on the body. That would have been a lot of work. This is a flimsy connection here, so I'm trying to change the way I do this so it's a little stronger. All right, those sections are taken care of. I'm gonna play with this for a minute. I wanna build my idea and it's something maybe I just have to sit with for a while. Well, that was kind of my idea, at least my first idea. You know, the idea is there's a hole here, and there, I think there's these little things that are opening 
Yeah. This section's gonna be hard. I'm gonna leave it at, leave it alone for now. I thought it'd be cool to add these little round slopes here instead of the flat tile across. The whole idea is it's all cylindrical all the way forward. And uh, that's what's giving me a hard time up here. Is I want to kind of have the idea I want to carry these slopes going here, not have these. I think that's kind of weird how these don't line up vertically and that's not even a full stud there it's like half a half a plate hmm that kind of shoots down that idea and so the problem with these these two by threes is they actually stick out a little bit you know they're not flush with this section here which is kind of why I had the idea maybe I should do a Technic connection, you know, kind of carry the whole uh, round slope here all the way through and then just have these sections snap together. Um, that kind of goes against what I was trying to do with strength, but maybe if I have, you know, like a good four pins connecting it, it would be solid enough. Once I get kind of stuck, I look for other things to build. In the back, um, I think the engines here are supposed to be two, two little uh, lights or engines right next to each other. So I gotta figure that out too. So I think one idea is to take one of these round tiles with the stud on it. Got my two engines. We'll see what I think about that. I like those in light bluish gray. I don't know if I have them in light bluish gray. I may have to steal them off something.